let's get into it with this first question that we have. Okay. Spencer and Jordan are looking to start a small business together. They're concerned about their personal exposure to liability. Which of the following business structures would be most suitable for Spencer and Jordan? Okay. With each question, I'm going to go through in excruciating detail just so you understand my thought process. The first thing I'm trying to identify is what section of this course from, this course is from. Now, I know it's business structures, so it's week seven material. Uh, it's not contract. It's not about agency. You're like, mm, no, no, not really about agency. It's not about contract. It's not about consumer law. It's not about negligence. So business structures is what it is. And yes, of course, they're all different business structures. As I look at the problem, what are they concerned about? Well, what does my handy dandy uh, hint sheet, what's, uh, what's it actually saying I need to know about agency and types of legal structures? Well, I've got my different legal structures here, but I've really made a note to myself that I need to understand the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so I need to be able to match the kind of structure with the advantage or disadvantage of that structure. This one is reasonably simple out of all of them, you know, exposure to liability. So if you're worried about liability, what you actually want to do is limit your liability. And the way we limit liability is with a company structure, right? Sole trader, they can't be sole traders if there's two of them. Partnership, well, they would have a lot of liability and exposure. A trust uh, isn't a legal entity, so they would have the same liability as if they're sole traders. So it's either got to be a proprietary company or a large public company. Um, technically, both of these will limit their liability. In reality, the proprietary company is the one that we're going to go for, the PTY LTD. And there's a couple of reasons for that. We'll remember that the red tape, etc., is lower for a proprietary compared to a public company. So they get the liability without um, the extra red tape that comes with it. So to some degree, you get a different kind of liability as you move to a public company. So proprietary limited company would be the kind of business structure for two people starting a small business who want to limit their liability. Right? A large public company would be where you need to raise capital from the public, etc. So that's why the answer would be D. Let's look at two. Marlon has appointed Veronica as a sales agent. The written agency, the written agency agreement states Veronica is authorised to sell Marlon's good within Queensland and New South Wales. Veronica enters a sales contract with a buyer in South Australia, where she was able to negotiate a price which was twice the normal price. Marlon was excited and agreed to be bound by the contract. Which of the following types of authority is applicable? Okay, so this is an agency problem. Uh, let me go back to my uh, handy dandy hint sheet. Agency. So we need to understand an agent's authority, express, implied, apparent, and by ratification. Okay, so I know that they're the kinds of things that I need to have a handle on in this area. So a written agreement, but she doesn't do... What she does is outside of the scope of the written agreement, okay? She sells Marlon's goods in Queensland and New South Wales is where she has authority. And she actually has express authority to sell them in Queensland and New South Wales. But she doesn't. She sells them in South Australia. So she does not have express authority. That's out. I don't think you were. You couldn't imply that she's allowed to sell it in South Australia just because she has a contract for Queensland and New South Wales. I don't think that that's incidental. So it's not implied authority. Is it apparent authority? Well, you know, technically there are things here that say it might be. Um, we know that there's a three-part test for apparent authority. Okay, so the... Uh, so the um, 
buyer must not know that she didn't have authority. So I, we, we don't really know that, but there's no sign. Um, and also we know that the principal, Marlon, must have done something to make the buyer think Veronica. Well, you know, he has made her a sales agent. We don't know a lot, but there could be an act there. And then the buyer must rely on it. Again, it looks like they have, but there's a lot of fuzziness in my answers, right? So I'm not really sure it's apparent authority. It, it might be. Apparent authority is a better answer than implied or express authority. Okay, so I'm thinking about that. What about ratification? Well, ratification is where you authorize the act after it's done, even when it was outside the authority. Look at this. Marlon is excited and agreed to be bound by the contract. He's ratified it. That's our baby. Part D, yeah? Authority by contract? I, I don't even know. that. You know, That's not even an authority term that we use. Okay. So the answer for two uh, would be D. It's okay. It's authority by ratification. Finally, question three for this little vodcast. Um, which of the following statements is most correct? Oh, geez, I don't like these most corrects, but let's have a go anyway. An agent can only have authority if there's a written contract. No, that's not true. You can, you can have a verbal contract for agency. In fact, a partnership we know uh, is an agency that can arise, an agency relationship that can arise by, by implication. So, you know, we, we, we know that that's not true. A partnership provides the benefit of limited liability. No, that's not true, right? It's exactly the opposite. Um, you're liable for all your partners, so, so B is not true. C, an individual can be both a trustee and a beneficiary of a trust. Yeah, that's true, right? So we know that there are these different roles in a trust, the set law, the trustee, the beneficiary. Remember, the beneficiary is the one who gets the money, the trustee is the one who looks after the money, and the set law is the person uh, who established the trust. So yeah, you can be in both the role of looking after the trust uh, and getting the benefit of the trust. So that's true. A public company is a separate legal entity. Okay, that's true. But a proprietary company is not. No, that's that's not true. Both a public company and a proprietary company are, are both separate legal entities. Companies are separate legal entities, so that's not true. An agent does not owe any duties to a principal. Again, I know that that's not true, right? The agent can take advantage of the principal, so they actually do owe them duties, particularly, right, they've got to act in the interests of the principal, uh, around the kind of transactions that they're the agent for. So that's not true. So actually, I don't mind this question anymore. This is, uh, it's, it's very, very clear to me that the answer to this one is C. An individual can be both a trustee and a beneficiary of a trust.